Hey everybody, my name is Vincent Baynard. I'm one of the drummers with Elevation Worship. And today we're gonna to be talking through sort of our approach to how we tune drums, um, set them up, and achieve our drum sound with Elevation Worship. So we're gonna start with the kick drum. And uh, we've got a DW Collector Series kick here. Um, they're just real consistent drums for us and they're what we like to use for a lot of our projects. And um, we've got a Power Stroke P3 Clear black dot head on it. We like this a lot for the studio. Um, when we're live, we like to use the Power Stroke P3 Smooth White. It just translate, translates a little bit better. And for the kick, I like to keep it real simple. Um, right now we've got new heads on it and I just go through and make sure everything is finger tight and we're good there. And then I just like to go through and I'll do the star pattern and just kind of do a half turn on everything and just I'm feeling as I go, making sure everything is kind of uniform because a lot of times as you're tightening, they'll kind of loosen up. So as I'm going, I'm finger tightening each one before I go the half turn. So now that we've got everything like half turn, um, we're just gonna kind of go through and feel and make sure nothing is too out of order here. So now that we've got the batter side pretty much situated, we're gonna do the same process on the resonant side. We'll just kind of, everything is finger tight. We'll go through just half turn as a starting point and then just kind of listen through the drum and just make sure nothing's kind of out of whack and then we'll keep moving from there. And on this resonant side, we've got a Power Stroke P3 Ebony. So now I've got half turn all around. We'll just kind of feel, make sure nothing is too loose. This actually feels pretty good. And no wrinkles anywhere once we push down on the middle. So now that we've got it pretty much in place, we'll put a kick pedal on it and then we'll give it a couple kicks and make sure everything feels good, sounds good, and we'll make some tweaks from there. So now that we've got the kick pretty much tuned to a good place, we've added a kick pedal and we've added a little Evans EQ patch to the kick drum, which um, helps with the longevity of the kick head a little bit, but it also adds a little bit of attack, which I like. And so now we'll just give it a few kicks and see how it feels, how it sounds, and we'll make some tweaks if we need to. So that feels really good to me. And a lot of times I'll just kind of double check, making sure nothing is loose, keeping everything pretty uniform. Um, nothing's wrong here, so it feels good. Sounds pretty good in the room, so I think we're good with the kick for now. So now that we've got the kick in a good place, we're gonna move on and start with the rack tom. We've got a 13 by nine rack tom here. Um, it's usually our go-to size for a rack tom. And we like to use the TuneBot it's a cool little tool that you can use to kind of quickly dial in a drum set. It's not like a final thing. At the end of the day, you have to listen to the drum and like make sure you're, the drum is agreeing with what you're trying to do to it. Um, but I've generally found that it's a good place to start to kind of get something roughly in the ballpark. So for our rack tom, we like to um, get both the top and the bottom head to the same frequency. I know sometimes you can tune the bottom head tighter for resonance and stuff, but I've generally found that getting both heads at the same frequency gives you the maximum resonance and then you can control it from there with some moon gels or something like that. So we're gonna start with the bottom head. We've got just a Remo Ambassador Clear and we're generally shooting around 150 for our 13 inch rack toms. And right now these are just finger tight and they're sitting around 109, so we're not too far off. So now I'll just kind of go through and then just slowly tweak it, bring it up. And once we get around 150, 152, then we'll just kind of move on to the top head. And as I'm doing this, I'm listening. I'm not just looking to hit a number. I'm listening to the drum and making sure that everything is sounding pretty uniform. Right now we're at 124, so we're just gonna kinda keep moving up a little bit. I'm probably going about a quarter turn each time. So 
we're sitting at about 142, so we're getting there. And then we'll just make a final little small adjustment. One thing to note too, that as I'm turning, I'm feeling the tension on each drum, so I'm not cranking one and leaving another one pretty low to try to hit a number. I'm making sure that I'm trying to keep everything pretty uniform. Cool, so we're at 153, which is good enough for me. And then we'll swap it over and do the top head as well. And then we'll just start with, we'll probably do half turns here. Cool, so we're pretty much sitting around 152 right there. So now that we've pretty much got it ballparked, what I'll do is I'll put it on the stand and then I like to, when I'm hitting the drum to test it, I wanna hear like one consistent note. I don't want it to be diving too much or to have like any weird uh, resonance. So let's just see what it sounds like. So that actually sounds pretty good. So what I like to do from here is we've got some moon gels and this drum is just wide open right now and it's ringing as much as it can because the top and bottom are at the same frequency. There's a little bit of like a papery sound that I'm hearing and I've found that usually the bottom head is where that's coming from. So I've got a moon gel here that I've cut into a little thin strip and then I'm just gonna place it somewhere towards the rim of the drum, not too far and then I'll listen from there. So that took that little tone that I was hearing out of there. So I'm just gonna leave that and then I'll put one somewhere around the top towards the rim as well. And this is just taking a little bit of the resonance out just to make it a little more manageable. So that sounds pretty good to me right now, and we can go through and make final tweaks once we get the full kit put together, but I think we're good with the rack tom right now. So now that we got the rack tom in a good spot, we've added a couple floor toms. We've got a 16 by 16 and an 18 by 16, and the process for these two is, will be the same process that we did on the rack tom. I've already gone through it. It's uh, tuning the top and the bottom head to the same resonance on both sides, and then once we get them in a good spot, adding some moon gels to control some of the resonance. And on the 16, we like to keep it about 120, 121 on top and bottom. And then on the 18, we like to keep it around 96. And those numbers just kind of give us the intervals that we're looking to hear between the drums. And um, sort of big picture, the reason we're using coated heads are to give us just a little bit more of a warm sound. In worship, it's kind of a lot of big toms and stuff like that. And the clear heads just kind of cut, have a little bit too much attack for us. And from some like a tuning perspective, when we're using the tune bot, what you need to do, the reason I was putting it on the drum throne was because you need to have one side of the head muted so that you can see the, and see and hear the frequencies that are happening on the, whatever head you're working on at the time. So that's why I was doing that. And one other little thought is we cut the moon gels into little strips rather than just putting a full moon gel on there. What that does is it lets us kind of get a little more refined in how we control the resonance without just completely squashing the sound of the drum. We like to still let them breathe and have some uh, life to them. And we found that if you can just use little strips instead of a full one, then that helps us with that. So I'll go through these now and let you hear the drums. Again, this is 150-ish on top and bottom. And this is 121 top and bottom. And then this will be 96 top and bottom. So that's a nice little interval. And it sounds really good for our context. So now that we've got these in a good spot, we'll add in the snare. All right, so now we've got all of our toms in place and tuned up nice. We've added in the snare. This is a six and a half by 14 Ludwig Black Beauty. It's one of my personal favorite snares and it's one of our favorites to use for recording. Um, I've done the same process with this snare that I've done with the toms as far as using a tune bot. The only difference is we tune the top and bottoms to different frequencies and I've just found that it just sounds a little better that way. On the top, I like to keep it around 250, something like that. And then on the bottom, I keep it around 380. And that's just a personal preference. It feels good to play in that range and it also sounds good. One thing to note about the snare tuning is 
I know in worship, a lot of times the tendency is to like tune down really low and you can definitely get good drum sounds that way, but I've found that by kind of staying in the mid range a little bit of tuning that it lets the drum breathe a little bit better and that kind of helps with some of that low end that people are looking for. So this might actually be tuned to maybe a touch higher than some typical snare snares would be tuned. But I found that this records really well in this range and it also just sounds really good in the room. Um, one final little thought about the drums themselves. I like to use these lug locks. And what this does is on the snare in particular, it, it's getting a lot of love. So if you can just pop them on here, it keeps the rods from detuning and keeps your snare and the rest of your drums in tune a little bit better. There's a couple of different ones that I like to use. This one is made by tuner fish and they just look like a little fish, which is cool. But I like these a lot for the tops because it keeps, it can only go so far before it just doesn't let it detune any further. I like to use these little just kind of rectangular ones on the bottom just because they're more convenient. You don't have to worry about them falling off as much as you do with um, the fish. So now that we've got everything kind of put together, I'll just kind of go through the kit real quick, let, let you hear it, and then we'll move on and kind of round things out talking about symbols. So now that we've got the actual drums themselves put together, I wanted to just briefly touch on our approach to cymbals. We typically are going for a darker sound, which is pretty typical of worship music. Um, Size-wise, we tend to lean towards 20-inch crashes. They just have enough decay, but they get out of the way of the mix pretty quickly. Um, for hi-hats, we typically stay 15, 16 inches, something like that. Um, it gives us a nice wash for when we're opening them up um, for some situations, but it still has a nice crispness to it when it's closed. 22 inch rides usually are where we're sitting for the same reason they're bright enough when you're crash riding that they sit in a good spot in the mix, but they're not um, weak sounding like maybe a 20 or something would be for our context. Um, and you can achieve that dark washy sound with any brand. We're not too brand specific. We use all kinds of different brands. So this is pretty much our approach to achieving a drum sound in worship music. It's definitely not a one-size-fits-all approach, but it's what works for us in our context. I hope this has been helpful, and thanks for watching.